Hello, brothers and sisters. I am Ogre Six, and like everyone else, I have to get the rent paid. I am too ugly for prostitution and too explosion-averse to cook meth, so these days I pay my way washing dishes at a local eatery. I walk to work every day, and I usually show about half an hour early. That way I can sit and relax a bit, get my mind settled, before I clock in and commence the long slog. Monday a couple weeks ago was cold and wet, but I was thoroughly bundled, and I am not made of sugar, so I perched on the concrete steps in the alley behind the joint, lit a cigarette, shut my eyes, and proceeded to lose myself in David Bowie. After some time, I became aware that someone was speaking to me. I opened my eyes to find a sweet young woman in a floppy white hat. "'Can I buy you a cup of soup?' she asked. "'Beg your pardon?' It's just that you look so cold sitting here, so, you know, if you're hungry or, well, anything, uh, I could, you know, maybe buy you a cup of soup or something? Oh. Oh, I see. I started to laugh, but she was so shy and earnest, I was afraid of hurting her feelings. My love, you're mistaken. I'm not homeless. Just sort of disheveled. I laughed it off because I'm used to people making that particular mistake. You see, I'm a bit scruffy looking. You guys don't know that, of course. You only ever see me as I draw myself. This picture is pretty accurate as far as it goes, but you'll notice that this fella here has recently trimmed his hair and beard. When I trim, I'm presentable, but if my job doesn't require it, well, the periods twixt the brief moments in which I can be troubled tend to run a bit long. So, I look like this rather less often than I look like this. My clothes don't help either, especially in cold weather. I hate to spend money, and on the long list of things I hate to spend money on, only bail bondsmen rank higher than clothes. As long as they're comfortable, provide adequate protection from the elements, and obscure the things I can be arrested for failing to obscure, I figure it's unreasonable to expect anything more from them. As a result, I tend to wear clothes far longer than most people would. On this day, I had on a perfectly respectable Oxford and slacks for work, but she couldn't see those. She could only see my hat and coat. The hat is homemade, and it's a hand-me-down. I've had it since high school, but actually it's older than I am. My coat had already been around the block a few times when I bought it for five bucks at a second-hand store in 1995, and I've put quite a few miles on it since. Last winter, an actual homeless guy offered to get me a better coat, in fact, but although it's old and threadbare, it was originally very fine, very expensive, and it's still quite heavy and warm, so why would I replace it? Any coat I could afford would be inferior. So yeah, this happens quite often. It's impossible to guess how often, since most of the time I probably don't know it. Think about it. When you see a homeless person, what do you say to him? Probably nothing at all. Almost no one initiates conversations with the homeless. I know I don't. I doubt that every person who avoids eye contact with me thinks I'm homeless, but I'd be interested to know what the percentage is. What made this occasion unusual wasn't what she thought, but how she acted. Mostly when folks can bring themselves to speak to me, it's to say something like, Excuse me, do you have business here? Which, of course, translates as, Would you please fuck off and stop making my customers uncomfortable? This happens even in places I'm supposed to be. Once I walked into a bar I worked in and heard a customer telling the bartender, Oh God, there's another one. Want me to throw him out for you? When I worked at the library at Marshall University, Campus PD accosted me on a smoke break, convinced I was panhandling and harassing the students. I assured them I wasn't, and they asked to see some ID. I patiently explained that I didn't have it on me, not having expected to need it, but that it was locked up in my desk, in my office. So, my appearance generally inspires distaste, if not outright aggression. But in her, it inspired only compassion. There isn't really a moral to this story. I suppose I could say something like, Never judge a book by its cover. But that's such a terrible cliché, plus which I don't agree with the sentiment. In my experience, the cover is generally a fairly reliable indicator of the contents. If you saw me on the street and thought I was homeless, you'd be wrong. But probably everything else you thought would be true. Perhaps I could say something about treating everyone we meet with dignity and empathy, but why? Everybody already knows we ought to do that. Either we do it or we don't, and nothing I say here is going to instill humanity in anyone who doesn't already possess it. 
Anyway, though it is a point worth making, it deserves a better messenger than me. I'm sorry to admit that I am frequently utterly contemptuous. My purpose in making this video is rather more personal. You see, once she realized her mistake, the sweet young thing was embarrassed and flustered. She quickly apologized and ran off. For my part, I think very slowly, and it didn't occur to me till she was gone how remarkable her reaction was. I wish that I'd told her that, so, on the off chance that she watches YouTube, this is for her. It's okay, I don't mind. If I minded, I'd shave and buy some new clothes, so don't be embarrassed. I do appreciate the thought, and though I don't need your help, many do, so please don't stop asking. I feel a lot better about the world knowing that you're in it. You were a bit of sunlight to me, and I thank you for that. I wish I was more like you. I'll try to be more like you. Tell you what, come on back around any time. Soup's on me.